And we're back with Monster Prom. I asked chat what they wanted to see after a beaver game. And they're like, Monster Prom. So, uh, there you are. Let me go ahead and... Monster Day. What's a good gift for Monster Day? Sure. There we go. That's a good gift. Alright, cool. Let's get into this thing. This is a good game. I know nothing about this game, aside from chat said it's competitive monster fucking. Which is just a weird thing. Online. Why is there online? Settings. Anything? Okay. It can be challenging? Uh, awesome voice effects, please. Yes. How many characters are... Ju just me. Uh... What? <laughs> what the fuck is this? What? Do short? For now. Yeah, let's do a short one first. Spooky high school. The sweetest years of our lives. Back then we were young and unafraid. Sometimes reckless, sometimes brilliant, sometimes just stupid, but always willing to live our life to the fullest. We're on a wild journey to discover who we really were. Choose player one. All right, who am I? Uh, I could be this ghosty boy, this fire bitch, a zombie, or another zombie. I like this guy. Uh, okay, cool. So I'll, I'll be a dude. And, uh, custom name. Uh, I need a name. Chat, give me a name. What's the name of my ghosty monster friend? He's gonna go on all of the dates. Pingal? Jared? Scrotus. Pingal. Sure. Pingal it is. Uh... And we'd yet to experience the ultimate challenge, the monster porn. I remember it clearly. Three weeks were left. As we were all fantasizing about our dream prom dates, we were all scrambling to catch the attention of one of our six most charismatic ha classmates. Miranda Vanderbilt, a sweet mermaid princess who was as cute as she was genocidal. Damien LeVay. A fearless demon with a taste for destruction and a love of fire. <laughs> Scott Howell, a werewolf athlete who compensates for his rather small brain with a stupidly large heart. <sighs> Liam de Lioncourt, a hipster vampire whose standoffish demeanor hid the fact that he was a lovable dork. Yay! Polly Geist, a party ghost with an insatiable hunger for all things, all the wrong things. And. And Bear Oberlin, a mean self-made Gorgon with a merciless sense of business. It was clear. It had to be one of them, but who? Um. Not none of these are really my type. Well, there's six of them, right? So I guess we could just roll a dice if I'm having a hard time figuring it out. Bone the werewolf? Should I do a pull? The dice says the mermaid. There's more characters with the DLC you got, I think. We only have three days or three weeks to choose our prom date. And even more daunting, we only have three weeks to woo and conquer their heart. But as I already said, they were we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. Welcome to Monster Prom's stupidest pop quiz ever. All minds are rotten, but they're as rotten in so many different ways. Worry no more, we're now using our PhD in bullshit to diagnose which kind of deviant sicko you are. 
Monster Prom's stupidest pop quiz ever will throw you a bunch of absurd questions at you and turn your answers into your character stats. These will each, uh, this is, each of you will start by having stats that better reflect your true selves. Let's start. Which is the coolest mythological creature? The invisible hand of the free market. I wouldn't say that's cool. Um, a sphinx uh, who's super turned up and ready to party. She wraps all of her riddles. Then she kills you if you don't answer them correctly, but she still wraps the riddles. Um, a weird creature, creature I drew when I was six, which is clearly super derivative from other mythological creatures, but it's super cool. Is my OC and my spirit animal. Okay. Turns is not a phrase that's used anymore. Um, it, it, it's like, um, yeah, crunk. <laughs> On fleek? What, what's the new term for turnt? Is there one? Those are all about the same age. Junk and or high. I kind of like the invisible hand of the free market. That one make me joke. If you had to have sex with an animal, which animal would it be? This is the furry test. This is the furry test. Fuck you. A swan because they're classy and reminds me that we're of that myth of Leda and the swan. At least bestiality standards has some sort of chic appeal. Okay. A great white shark. If I'd fuck any animal, at least make it a story worth telling. Or human being, because I'm the kind of douchebag who loves to find loopholes and stupid questions like this one. I'm not going to give you the fucking honor of figuring out if I have a persona and what it is. I'm a human. I'm a human. I'm happy with who I am. That is smart. What was your dream first date? Sweaty and manly wrestling match. Uh, wild party in international waters, crimes, a lovely walk in the forest after rescuing your date from a dragon, an art exhibit, uh, experimental enough to give you a seizure, or a professional meeting where, um, uh, crimes. Crimes. Nice. All right. Okay. What the fuck? How is this multiplayer? Alright, well, if I had a choice... I'm gonna check out the outdoors. That creepy tree looks fun. During the recess, you start a half-hour rave that goes full crazy. You have no idea how it escalates so much, but at one point there are 300 people. Someone summons demons from the nightmare dimension and consequences might distort the fabric of reality itself, but who cares? It was a rad party. You gain two fun. You're bored of doodling in your notebook when Damien suddenly appears. What the fuck is this doodle? Is that me? Am I cuddling shirtless with Liam? What? Dude. If you were looking for a shortcut to the morgue, this is your lucky day. Give me one reason not to cover your face with my fists. Oh no, they discovered your erotic fan art of them. You can't let them think, you can't think of any way to calm them both down. Maybe the right answer is to calm one of them. The fuck is this? This fuckery, dear Damien, is art. I present to you, Yowie. Or, don't be silly. You don't want to fight me. You're clearly fighting against your urge for cuddling. That's a power play. Uh, to be like, yeah, what of it? I'm drawing porn of you. Calm down, Damien. You're such a bigot. Hm. Have you... I have heard of this, Yowie. 
It's a millenarity form of art from the East. A delightful celebration of love and desire. What? So I must admit, this piece of art is full of raw time. Look at the strokes, the expressions, the suggestive placement of the hand. It contains so much with so little. Dude, are you high? Look at the other one. You're fucking pregnant. This is insanity. It's not insanity. But neither is this one... It's not insanity, but... Neither is this one exactly Yaoi. It's impreg. Okay. Okay, so, like, I'm I'm not far enough in this stream that I can't return this game. <laughs> Why is there fucking impreg in this? Behold, what a way of standing against the gender status quo. They're changing the world one pregnant doodle at a time. I'm out. Nah, there's no way you could convince me that this shit isn't weird, or wrong, or problematic. Get, I'm out of this plot line. Ignore him, Pingal. I've been searching for the pinnacle of art for generations. Little did I know it was here all along, in the ancient form of Yaoi. Will you accept me as your student? May I call you Sensei? I think this is a good thing. You got two creativity and one smarts. Okay. <laughs> what the fuck? All right. I have to choose where I want to sit. Um, I don't know who either of these two are. There's a furry and... Um, he was into the yaoi. That's kind of weird. The furries, the shop. Uh, I'm just going to let whatever happens, happens. I'm going to investigate this. Taking a break from socializing to eat your lunch when someone punches you in the knee. It's Slayer. She's hiding under your table. Eat knee pain, freak. Now I'm going to punch your other. Ow. She just threw an apple at her. Finally, used for that red delicious. You defeated the Slayer. She flees, leaving two choices of uh, pieces of loot behind. The loot flashes rapidly, getting ready to disappear. It's almost like you're in some sort of video game. No time to compliment or contemplate the nature of existence. Pick some loot before it's gone. Garlic, rice, and holy water. One of the monster's weaknesses, another monster's dinner. Or a gun that shoots stakes with each shit burned onto the side of them. Um, having a gun at school is weird, man. Uh, okay, everyone's saying two. Scoop up the sweet ass gun and go about your day. You're obviously not gonna use it to kill any of your classmates. You're a monster, not a monster. But later in biology class, the teacher teacher calls you up without any warning. You panic because who has time to do the rending reading when you're trying to smooch your classmates? But in a panic, turn self assertive when you hear the teacher question, What do flies do? And responding with some lame-ass spoken words, you respond by firing a wooden stake straight into the chalkboard. Eat shit! Claims the, <laughs> claims the teacher. Why, that's exactly right. Congratulations. You meant to shoot the teacher, but hey, whatever works. You gain four boldness. Okay. <sighs> Let's, uh... Go to the library. Spend the day spending some time on the library's PCs playing some good old online poker. Gambling seems stupid and a dangerous decision, but who cares? Time paid off, so fuck it. You gain two money. Okay. You spy on Vera and Liam engaging in their favorite pastime, a variation of people watching called monster judging. Do you see what she's wearing? Newsflash, lime green stripper boots do not go with Chuku. 
Chupacabra fur. Chuchito fur. So at least she made a choice. I've seen at least six people wearing the same Air Gorgon sneakers. You really are the lucky ones, Liam. Most people aren't. Are just absolutely hideous. But even in their hideousness is mediocre. Most people are hideous. But I have yet to see one who is the most hideous. Wonder what such an abomination would even look like. True hideousness is on the outside, or in the inside, in your organs. A person who's with their organs on the outside would be the most hideous. A toned body, symmetrical face, and nice features become traditional beauty standards are such hideously mainstream. Um, that one. <laughs> Yeah, so I always said that the person's inside could always be worse, even if uh, worse than their shell. Passing Herbert Crab Dragon hybrid glares at her, but Vera doesn't seem to care. I mean, unkempt eyebrows are gross enough, but unkempt esophagus? The mind reels. I will admit, as repulsive as I find most people, it would be hard for me to ignore the exposed circulatory system. There's nothing more hideous than being drawn to repulsive people just because you're thirsty. <sighs> I can't relate. I can relate. I've seen Polly drawn some pretty repulsive low lives herself when she's thirsty. Of course, it's a different sort of thirst, but the principle certainly holds. The innocent joy of bonding over mutual diversion of appear or di derision, division of appearances of others. You gain two fun and one creativity. What would I do if my organs were grown on the outside of my body? Die. Alright. Give me your money. Welcome to my shop. Buy some shit. Shit that boosts your stats, shit that leads you into a new stupid adventures, even some that might be needed in very specific moments. So let's take a look. Highlight high school social life is so hard nowadays that hiring a PR agent is totally a thing. Um a tampon used by the former prom queen. Okay. What the fuck is this game, guys? Some impractical yet kind of funny glasses. Gift that keeps on giving. I'm wise enough to know when a gift needs given. Oh, that's a fucking Justin Timberlake reference. Um, Lonely Island, right? Badass fake tattoo. Online encyclopedia, good journal idea is still be able to act as though you've read it. Oh, God. Uh, these two give events. A blanket with two holes. Literally a white blanket with eye holes in it. You could be an idiot who mistakes this for a ghost costume. But most of our classmates are idiots. Corpse? So in a corpse, it's like some sort of fashion accessory. I'm not really sure how to dispose of it. Uh, sure, let's buy a corpse. There's nothing wrong or weird about that. Uh, let's sit at this table. Strange that you could have sworn that Polly and Damien were at your table when you picked it. Hey, loser, down here. Hey, boo. Hey, it's us, Polly and Damien, hiding under this table for un totally innocent reasons. Fresh roar from the door of the cafeteria. Crazy Martin, the werebear janitor, is here and he's looking for someone. Oh shit, he's here. Why is he after us anyway? I think we, uh. I think what we really did falls more under federal jurisdiction. International law, more like these munchkins were Canadian citizens. Now you mention it, I think we might actually have to face a war crimes tribunal. Worth it though, right? Oh, totally. As long as we can get away from Buzzkill the bear over there. Just hide in the ghost zone. You know a special alternative dimension only ghosts can use? Uh... I don't think both of them have that ability. Wish the sequel is better. There's a sequel? Did I buy the wrong one? Is this the right game? Uh, hide behind diplomatic immunity. 
Not me, I'm not even a princess of hell. Guess you should have thought of that before being born a commoner, huh? I wasn't born, Damien, I was died. We'll die better next time. Try and keep that in mind uh, when I'm trying tried at fairy tale court for negligent munchkin side. Great, let me know how it goes. I'm off to crush on an or or crush an orphanage and get away with it because of my I'm royalty. Later, after the orphanage crushing, Damien takes you out for ice cream. Sweet, literally. Nice. Uh, fuck. Let's try this one. Show me that money. Oh, whoops. Thanks. Boldness twenty three. Xmas gun. Okay. I have so many guns. All right. All right. Let's go to the auditorium. That's where I was trying to go. That day, while rehearsing for the class play, it's almost as though the muses themselves have descended to give you a figurative blowjob. The performance is intense and inspiring. It will be remembered for generations. Which is pretty hard for high school play standards. Okay. While doing all that, you've been carrying your newly acquired corpse as if it's a totally normal thing to do. But some people think otherwise. Oh, it's the four most hateful people in school. Ugh. Are you carrying that corpse, idiot? What a shameful display of a of distaste. <laughs> yeah, what a noob. Carrying around corpses is for noobs. Oh, oh corpses. I love corpses. I'm super drunk. How old are you? I'm really bold because I have a gun. The three most hateful people in school and Polly. As a school social elite, we disapprove of this, and I'm the head of the hierarchy, so I cannot condone such stupidity under our domain. Taste of the hierarchy, and I don't appreci uh, appreciate such purulative use of a corpse. A lesser known fact about corpses, they smell. What? What grade level are we in? I'm the fist of the hierarchy and I want to punch you because punching people is what I do. I'm Polly. I'm also super drunk, so whatever Vera says. Fuck it, high school? Why did they all get held back if they're 20? Yikes, despite your disregard for super stupid social conventions and social hierarchies, you feel the urge to please them. And maybe it's because that's what this game is about. When you brought this corpse, Valerie told you that it was a fashion accessory and that she was absolutely not trying to just dispose of a body. But now you're starving, starting to feel like you might have been fooled. No time to lose. How can you convince people that the corpse is actually a pretty hot fashion accessory? Shallow social creatures only respond to status. Rip the brand logo off most high-end accessories, you know, on your own and put it on the corpse. So like a supreme corpse? Or... Where is a hat? I think I'm gonna do the second one. It makes the most sense. You quickly rip the logo off another piece of clothing that you had on you and put it on the corpse. Wait, look, the corpse is actually a Burger Queen? Damn, you're so poor, your best piece of clothing is actually a paper bag from fast food chain you sometimes use as a hat? So you were going to eat this corpse? Disgusting. Fast food companies, am I right? They're always finding new lows. Give me that. Damien takes your corpse and bites his arm and chews for a while. Completely right, it's disgusting. No seasoning and it's super dry. Bet it's not even gluten free. I hate him? I hate him. I always suspected that Pingal was into fast food and necrophagia. You have a poor eating habits written all over your face. <laughs> Still drunk. And they leave you alone with your corpse, which is kind of the worst day ever. Also, Damien was right. Your corpse is kind of under seasoned and dry. You lose two fun and one charm. 
Why do you hate him? He looks and acts the most like you. Get out of my chat! Why are you so mean to me? Alright, I want to see what the mermaid girl is about, and I don't know who the fuck that is. You arrive at your table to find the coven eating. Polly, Miranda... Polly and... Miranda screaming. We're under attack! Alarm, alarm! Summon the guards! They're using their bizarro mind powers on me. The cute tall one is my less attractive evil twin. She's using shades just like me clearly because it's an evil twin thing. We're not attacking anyone. We're eating. What do you mean less attractive? Disgraceful. Lies! Subterfuge! I can feel them in my brain making me less cool and sexy. Always the same with you. Every single lunch hour. She reminds me of, uh, what is it, Helltaker? I think it's the red eyes and black outfit. You can't allow your friends to be attacked. Quick, save them from this fiendish menace. Drug their food. Yeah, let's do that. That sounds fucked up and evil. You reach into your pouch of drugs and pull out a handful of miscellaneous pills, which you sprinkle over the co coven's mashed potatoes. What are you doing? Are you trying to drug us? Idiots don't do drugs. You know what? How about we just move to another table? Suckers. They left their druggy potatoes. Look like everything's turning up, Polly. Polly eats all the drugs out of the potatoes, then decides that she's a canoe. A canoe that thinks that you're kind of cute. Okay. All right. I feel like I've done nothing. Um. An epic dodgeball match takes place. Everything, everything seems lost, but you deliver an inspirational speech that fuels your team's spirits, leading to a spectacular comeback. You're clearly a natural-born leader. You gain two charm. You notice Vera standing in the corner, pissed. Looks like a fresh braid on the back of her head is actually two of her snakes fighting. Poison is flying everywhere. I'm okay. It's just Hissy and Bob having another disagreement. It happens. Where is the line between monster fucker and just like mostly a human but also looks like a monster? Yeah, those shorts are um short. Maria's domain should be a kingdom or an empire. It's like, who cares? I'm telling you, if they were my hair, uh, weren't my hair, I'd sell them to Thailand, where they eat snakes. Uh. Decapitate them. You'd look cute with bangs? Vera raises a pair of scissors. She takes Bob by the head. You hear Bob hiss for mercy. He makes all sorts of promises you don't know snakes can make. Vera ruthlessly, ruthlessly severs Bob head, Bob's head as he begs for his offspring's safety. The other snakes quickly fall back and align themselves as a flawless wave. Lonely decapitated strand of snake that still twitches in agony, squirting blood and poison. Vera ties the tasteful bow around it to staunch Not the flow. Bad. That was a good call, thanks. They'll be silky and smooth from now on, or else. Listen to her sort of part of her? Didn't that hurt? Whatever, you gain two smarts and one boldness. I'm so fucking bold. Well, I mean, it pretty much is down to... I didn't even meet Wolf Guy. So he's out. I'm not doing the Wolf Guy. I haven't talked to the, the Wolf. Uh, the hipster guy I dislike. Damien literally loves you. How do you know that? Um. You spent every time period with different people. I didn't know where anyone was going to be. I'm really bold, so I could probably get away with whatever. Uh. I think I spent the most time with Damien and Polly. Looking at the stats, Rev is fucked. What am I supposed to have? Nobody is an option, but I mean, that feels like a failure. 
Who wants to go stag? Nobody's this ch ch Chad move? It's weak as shit, man. How is that a Chad move? Every character has certain stats they like. I'm... Um, okay. Well, it seemed like I got a lot of creativity for being near Vera. So that's probably not her thing. One, two, three, four, five, six different stats. She also probably likes money. Damien likes boldness. All right, I'm gonna try Damien. It's two stats per character, that sounds right. As Damien to the prom, yes. All right. Pluck up the courage to ask your beloved to go to the monster prom with you. Prom with you? Noob. What a noob. I'd have more fun setting ants on fire, which is what I'll actually be doing on prom night. Setting ants on fire is rad. Now get out of my I sight. You couldn't get a date for Monster Prom. Actually, you couldn't get a date for the rest of your life. Some nights alone in your bed with sadness. Uh, you wish sadness was an STD because at least you wouldn't be getting so much of it. Oof. Pink out. Most likely to survive uh, for a year drinking his own pee. Okay. Three weeks of the most epic and absurd weeks of our lives. After Monster Prom, we kept living our lives, bond and love, battling for friendship and learning uh, about who we were and who we could be. And you know what? Like it always does, life happened, and it was just wonderful. Zombie Girl's kind of cute. Damien loved fire in the uh, to the very end. Unfortunately, that wasn't a super, super legal affair. It ended up being in prison for arson. Fortunately, prison was also flammable. Polly took a summer job for the Ghost of Christmas present. She spent most of her time partying. There's almost no work because, you know, it was summer. Vera realized that she was a character in a video game, which infuriated her. She spent most of her life making connections and building power because she was not part of the game. She plays the game. So be careful. Maybe she's now the one playing, pulling your strings. For those three weeks, the monster problem seemed larger than life, and then it was just gone, like that. Monster problem might have ended them uh, then, but there are plenty other battles left in that war called youth. But once again, you are young and are unafraid, and we are ready to start. Okay. Wait, is that fucking... What the fuck? Jesse Cox? Holy shit. What? What is this music? It's a banger. None of the levels are balanced. Aaron Hansen. What? Oh, God. Uh, high school band vibes? Yeah, for reals. Okay. I guess we'll do another run? Let's do a, let's do a full game. I got the vibe down. It's a dating sim. Who are you? 
I'll be the zombie girl. I didn't realize that she was a playable character. She's cute. Um, and we'll custom name it Pingal. They're all cute. Okay. Which god do you pray to each night before sleeping? I pray to all kinds of gods. I have this business where people pay me to deliver their prayers every night. I even started to look for Chinese factory to outsource their prayers. Praying is kind of lame. I have a group text that set up with some deities. Dionysus, Beset, Loki, coolest cats in town. Uh, praying is for fools. I take compromising pics of gods molesting a tree. And now I black mail. I mean, Zeus doesn't give a shit. I'm going to go with this one. It's a good group of people. So now your chance to produce a movie. It's based on two guys walking away from ex rad explosions, but they don't look at explosions. Oh, come on. Something about superheroes, but a love triangle between beautiful yet relatable some. Okay. Uh... These all suck. Uh... Cool guys don't look at explosions. Self insert with hot superheroes. Um, Russian novel, Russian novel thing. Sure, I didn't even read all that, but the other two sucked. What would be a killer accessory? Fancy brass knuckles, shiny armor, coolness itself, fabulous purse, made it a skin of your worst enemy. Uh, necklace with your own name in case you forgot, or sunglasses at night. Uh, I'd probably do this one, or Brass Uncles are illegal in most places. I'm gonna go with this. Nice. Have you guys ever worn sunglasses at night? Let's go. All right. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there is a dice roll that I could do if I, I'm confused. All right, so who do we want to go after? Ghosts? Do I want to go for bathroom run? Crimes time? I'm trying to guess where anyone would be. Let's go for the bathroom. You skip your classes just hanging out in the bathroom because you respect no authority. Guess some people just want to watch the world burn by skipping class and hanging out in the bathrooms. You give zero shits, but you gain two boldness. Lady, you're minding your own business when you see Polly just floating down the hallway texting as you're about to approach her. Cool. Hey, there you are, Polly. Hey, Peter. I've been following your since. The scene of betrayal. What are you talking about, buddy? I haven't been pulling any pranks at all lately. Some very funny person messed with my sports gear. They put my left sock in my right shoe and my right sock in my left shoe. Polly, I know we're best bros, but you think I would never do a prank on me, but I think you did this prank on me. I smelled you. No, you didn't because ghosts don't have a scent. Maybe not a normal person, but a werewolf can smell anything, and ghosts smell like algebra and global warming. Right. Well, if ghosts don't smell, what am I smelling? Uh, sure is a mystery, or of course it's ghost smell. Like ecstasy spiked rose wine and Victoria's Seance lingerie. That's a good face. <laughs> Come on, Scoop! You riding a van? I can stick my head out the window? Of course! Anything to strike to me, cheer you up, my best buddy. Hop in the van and get to the case of the ghost smells. Scott opens up a whole bag of raw bones and begins swallowing them whole. Don't mind me, I just bought some Scott snacks. Zoink, Scott! They look delicious. I would digest uncooked marrow if I totally could. But as it is, Polly settles for lighting up a Polly snack and getting the whole van baked. Nice. You round the day out by tearing off a human's face and revealing that he was actually a spooky skeleton all along, just as you suspected. 
Oh boy, oh boy, that was fun. Let me get back to my... It's nice to let my tongue wag in the breeze. Can we go for another car ride soon? Huh, can we? Sure, bud. Anytime a prank goes wrong. I mean, anytime you want. This track should work like a charm, and you even got away with it. Thanks to a lack of meddling kids, you gained some fun and boldness. <sighs> Who's this Ziggy Stardust looking fucker? You're about to take a bite out of your sandwich when you realize some douchebag rips a hole in the fabric of reality. It is I, the interdimensional prince. I've been searching far and wide for a hero capable of solving the most fiendish riddle for me. A riddle of how to get my TV to switch from HDMI 1 to HDMI 2. I've tried everything short of actually using the remote control. You have a deep sigh of... Uh, and accompany the prince to his dimension where you solve his problem by using the remote control. You're both truly wise and generous. Thank you for all, and please allow me to teach you one of my kingdom's customary rituals. Perhaps laser communion might interest you, or reverse baptism, or eggs. The choice is yours. Fuck that, let's make up our own ritual, or how about a ritual where you give me a pile of money and go away? Egg doesn't appear to be an option. Yeah, I think we go for money. Because I don't really want to fuck him. He's not my type, man. You mean the right of poor fiscal decision making? I didn't know you were so reversed in the ways of my people. Of course I'd be glad to demonstrate. The prince dresses up in a golden onesie and hires a chorus of monks to chant, Why are you doing this? As he hands you a huge sack of cash. The exchange rate of the interdimensional dollars to actual money isn't great because he keeps doing this, but he still gained four money. Okay. Let's go. Let's buy an item early. Give me your money. You're gonna end up losing. Okay. Uh. Let's try Ghost Event. No refunds. All right, uh, bathroom only. Don't worry, there won't be an illustration of that specific moment. Thing is, if you make one of the boldest decisions of your life, you don't put the paper on the toilet seat before using it. Look at you, you crazy bastard. You gain two boldness, probably one stack of staphylococcus, and a tra slight chance of plus one STD. I don't think you can get an STD from a toilet seat. At least when it's not warm, man. Again, against the expected, you spot Scott and Liam engaged in what seems to be an intense conversation. Seems like they're so into it that you can't resist their urge to ask them what's going on. We're discussing a recent novel, Two Lights. <laughs> it isn't a novel, it's a rad movie with lots of cool dudes and amazing abs. Well, it's based on an actual, based on a novel, and it's anything but rad. It's cultural trash. How ironic. Yeah, I mean, like, you gotta, like, you gotta, like, bleed on a seat and then put the blood in you you can't get scds from toilet seats right <laughs> i'm pretty sure i decided to like it ironically the thing where there's this human girl and two guys who like her but the guys are part of the enemy two race two enemy human races a wild shirtless human and a mysterious oh this is twilight two lights i get it Wild shirtless humans and mysterious deep look giving humans. It seems like those type of humans can't stand each other. And oh, the deep look giving humans shine in the sunlight. It's actually a lesser known trait of some humans. The thing is, the next movie will be released as super si hyped, ironically. Get away, bro. We need to state our hunger for the two lights. It's an opportunity to show those two that you're well versed when it comes to saturating, uh, satiating urges. Go for it. Let's cosplay. Let's go shirtless. We should write a nuanced play based on it. Totally not a fanfic. Let's go tits out, man. Awesome, bro. Whoa, that's awesome. But mm. who should be who? I mean, the shirtless one turns uh, into wolves, which is kind of a relatable thing for me. 
And I mean, if it means showing my bod, well, I'm the kind of expert when it comes staring, staring mysteriously at people. Yeah, perfect team play. I can lend you some glitter. I have tons of it. We can make a fate or make a cheering sign. Seems you asked politely. You can get anyone to go shirtless. Who knew? You might end up being a true two lights fan. You gain two charm and one boldness. That's for you, chat. Let's get go. those ghost titties. Or those um, werewolf titties. Would you go shirtless? Um, no. I think we already did this event, right? So let's do a different one. Who the fuck is this guy? You find Scott Damien immersed in their favorite mobile game, Pokemans Go, based on the classic Pocket Humans. <laughs> Retro Bossworth uses tax income tax audit. No, my Lindsay Roberts never saves receipts. It's super effective. Now for the finishing blow. Wait. Reginald contract contracted lymphoma? Reginald's lymphoma deals 500 physical damage to him and 999 emotional damage to him and his loved ones. Woo! I went again! Why are your Pokemon so unhealthy, Damien? Because I make them all smoke cigarettes and live next to toxic wake dumps, obviously. Maybe you should stop that? Where's the fun in that? Let's have another match. What are you turd two nerds doing? Nerding around? Nerding it up, nerds? Whoa, Scott, is that you? I didn't recognize you under all that nerdy, nerdery. What are you doing playing a dumb video game for stupid babies? But Pokemans isn't dumb. It's cool because, because, no way is Scott going to come up with anything because if you do, maybe you can score some points with Scott or Damien. Say nothing, pelt them with steamed vegetables or... Show them that phone equipped with Pokemon's Go can also be used as a football. Frit barrel! No way, I didn't know it was a feature of Poke Pocket Man's Go. It's not. She's trying to grab someone's phone and snatch Damien's phone and heft it in one hand and fling it across the cafeteria. Hey, my phone! What the dick was that for? Yeah, someone threw something. I'll get it. Whoa, bro. Check out the purple spiral on that throw. That technique was right there. It's all install Pokemons on our phones right now. Then throw our phones at each other. Wolfpack bounds off to play full contact phone tag. Scott soon returns with Damien's phone in his mouth. Damien's phone is pretty much destroyed, but Scott is so happy to be playing fetch with you. Nice. Let's go. Okay, we can't go to the bathrooms because she's in there, so... Let's go outdoors. That day during recess, you start a half hour raid that goes full on crazy. You have no idea how it escalates so much, but one, at one point there are 300 people there. Someone summons demons, too fun. You spot Miranda and Scott in the vicinity. Seems like the perfect opportunity to test your new blanket. You wear it as you were as if you were a goofy ghost and approached them with a spooky boo while Miranda is explaining something to Scott. And that's why the treacherous air people are so absolutely the worst. And also most likely talk to the uh, disappearance of Mars Abar Ar Abargo. I'm not even meaning to hang out with Scott. I'm trying to hang out with the fucking ghosts. What's this? A ghost? Perhaps a foreign exchange student? Yeah. What are you talking about? Oh, sh I didn't see you there. So ghosty. You guys are joking, right? It's clearly Pingal wearing a blanket with eye holes cut in it. Jealousy is a powerful drug, Liam. Do not become addicted. Yeah, Liam. I don't see anyone saying, Oh, Liam is really just Pingal wearing a blanket with eye holes cut in it. Exactly, Liam. Even despite the many times we suspected it was so. What? I'm sorry, little ghost. We were ignoring you. That's true. Tell us. Do you have any cool ghost powers? Oh, yes. Divulge. Divulge. Ultimate ghost prank haunts someone into despair. You spot a victim for your prank. The Coven. You start running in their direction while screaming your best boo to date. What's this? Maybe it's a minion of the queen. The rumors say that she's preparing for the big bad in the next session. Stop booing at us. 
It's hard enough to save the world on a daily basis. We don't need people here underwhelming or undermining our morale. Stop booing! School's unbelievable. Snow Dragon, think of it the 30 months of support. School is unbelievable. They go running, looking for a place to recover from all the booing and undermining. Ghosts clearly haunted them, and they fought against all kinds of evil creatures. Such powerful ghosts, so cool. She just ran at them booing. I could literally do that, yet you didn't do it, Liam. So you're not a ghost, you're just jealous. Yeah, this is a very powerful ghost, a ghost we respect your ghostly powers, and we wish the very best on your ghost adventure. You leave. Running and booing before they realize how obvious that it's just you under a blanket. So there you gain two boldness and one smarts. What? What? Let's go. Bathroom run, let's go. Encounter three wild hyenas on the way there. The fuck run security here? Anyway, you subdue them with the help of your hair comb. God bless the monster scouts and all the idiotic scenarios they prepared you for. By the time you get done with the bathrooms, you're totally gained to boldness. I hope boldness is important. There's a great commotion in the bathroom. As you can see, there's usually the school's coolest hangout. You see Miranda, Liam, and Scott all crowded around the mirror. God damn it! Hey, sweetheart. Welcome home. Monster dating sim. Yeah, it's competitive multiplayer for some reason. Also, that's a real ass phone number in the back there. Well, oh, right there, right there. You see that spot right there? Don't poke me, Scott. And no, I don't see that. That's the point. Vampires, remember no reflection? How horrid it must be to not gaze upon your reflection for hours and hours each day. I have servants whose job it is to hold mirrors for me. And then he's... Then a second set of servants to hold up their arms so they don't get tired. Good point, Liam. Maybe you need servants. I could be your servant for the day. I could hold your mirror real good. What's the matter who's holding the mirror? I want to have a reflection. I want to do see the spot where I'm considering putting a double helix, triple gauge, real faux chimera scale cheek piercing. It needs to be a la at least half a centimeter left of three centimeters down from when anyone else would pierce their cheeks. You don't need a mirror for that. I can just pierce it right now. You trust me, right? Right? Anyway, there must be some way to inspect the potential spot, even sans reflection. Surgically remove Liam's face so he can see it himself. Use found materials to create a perfect replica of Liam. Himbo werewolf, uh, genocidal mermaid, uh, hipster, yaoi enthusiast, vampire. I think that would kill him. Why don't we go with this one? Well, I do love avant-garde art. I just love arts and crafts in general. Daddy still has the, my peasant skull mosaic from third grade on his fridge. Let's do it! Go Team Art! Scott rips the bar off the wall and begins to bend it in a vaguely human form. Miranda inserts a totally absurd amount of gold onto into the tampon machine and uses her supply to get to work replicating Liam's- Are we all in the same bathroom? Is this like co-ed bathroom? The fuck? Before long, they finished their masterpiece. Um, may not be able to see my reflection, but I know I don't look like that. It's true. On the floor is like four unspooled rolls of toilet paper topped a pile of tampons and covered in a s liquid soap. It's just making the toilet paper soggy. Why do you think highly unskilled high school monsters would be able to create photorealistic sculpture out of bathroom supplies? You lose two smarts and one creativity. Let's go. Okay. Uh. All right. I'm gonna actively try and hang out with Polly. <laughs> Should I just say fuck it and hang out with the the himbo at this point? Go himbo route. Okay, himbo route it is. As you approach the table, you see Vera delicately lifting a fork full of quinoa into her mouth. She brings her lunch from home when... Food! Fork! Six! Eight! Who do we delicate? Eating, 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 yay! 
Scott, what on earth are you doing? I'm cheerleading you to help you to be the best eater in the whole school. What caused this obsession with cheerleading me through uh, mundane activities that require no cheerleading? <laughs> Everything requires cheerleading, silly. That's why we have cheerleaders out for our cheerleaders. But I see my cheerleading is not working. You haven't eaten anything yet. It's because you keep staring at me with your damn... Uh, startling me with your damn cheerleading. I can't eat when I'm startled. No, I can't beat it. I must be cheerleading hard. Must not be cheerleading hard enough. Hey, friend, maybe you can help me. The problem is that we obviously aren't dressed up as a giant salad. Yeah, that's the himbo answer right there. That makes sense. I mean, sports cheerleaders dress like giant steaks and drumsticks all the time. Maybe that's just how they look when I'm really hungry. Anyway, let's dress up. Luckily, the school keeps some giant vegetable costumes in the auditorium for perfectly for health preser presentation. So you snag them and start cheering. Beets aggressive. Eat beets aggressive. There aren't even beets in this salad. It's just quinoa. And the tears of my enemies. Varys pissed, but she does eat her salad really fast, so you just leave her alone. Hooray for cheerleading. He's a fucking idiot. Bathrooms only. We have no money. Skip the class and just hang out in the bathroom because you have respect no authority, but you don't stop there. Who knew? Okay, yeah. Graffiti. Graffiti says I'm bold as fuck, and you know what's up? Turns out that the wall is a magic wall that grants wishes. What a wall. Deep voice resounds from within the wall and says, well, not bold as fuck, but maybe a bit bold. And then you gain two boldness. That's an opinionated wall. Anyway, lucky you. Then you realize you're feeling like going full ghost with your blanket again. You're observing your surroundings when you spot Miranda and Damien. You're about to get closer when suddenly... Greetings, beautiful high school s schoolers. It is I, the interdimensional pre uh, prince, uh, or prince. Fuck. I'm here to rescue you from your mundane existence. Just sign these marriage papers. Not this guy again. Look. Whoa. An underworld specter. This again? What again? Liam, this is clearly ass kicking powerful ghost. Look at his face, so deadpan, no expression at all. It's not because of the face, it's a sheet with two holes. <laughs> oh my god, it's the fucking ghost thing again? Man, I wish my face had two holes cut in it. That would be fucking metal. No, listen, it's not a face, it's ghost friend, help us, save us from this interdimensional creep. Yeah, do something. Do something ghosty. Um, just throw a rock at him. What? Ow! Inappropriate. Only violence I tolerate is violence of love. When a man forces his pure love onto his non-mutual lovers. And that violence is imposed by my army, usually alongside the former type of violence. I'll be back for you, my young lovers. And so he retreats into his dimension. Superb! Superb! Metal. That ghost has just beat the prince with his ghost powers. She just threw a rock at him. Dude, paying attention. It was clearly a ghost rock. What's the difference between a rock and a ghost rock? One is a rock and the other one is a fucking ghost rock. You do realize that you didn't answer my question, right? Ghost rock! Za! Yeah, throwing a rock at your problems like a champ. You gain two fun and one boldness. Well, I really hope that he likes fun and, and, and boldness. Let's go. Bathroom only ghost run. Monstrous act would instant, instantly give you 500 boldness. But come on, talking to yourself in the mirror, what's the merit in that? You know what? You can keep two boldness anyway for saying that to yourself out loud. Find Scott sadly holding up a bottle of power sludge. The food like elixir that gets you ripped. Whoa. Bruh. Wait. Uh I mean that's not the worst thing ever. Just kappa kappa kappa. I don't know why I deleted that. I don't know how to undelete it. Bruh, this protein shake is a bottle is gross. I don't even know what most of these ingredients are. Like, 
Flabograven and Abercrombide and Kale. Plus, it tastes like butt. Not Stranger's butt, which is an exciting to smell, but gross, nasty ass butt from the butt swamp. I can't just toss it though, I already opened it, and Coach is always saying I gotta finish what I start. Bro, help me find something to mix this power drink into to make me buff and taste good. Make the drink taste good, I mean, I don't need to taste good. I think I taste fine. Grape flavored steroids. Oh, a thought I gonna cast her. Oh shit, hold up. Um Timeout ten minutes? That seems a bit excessive, but sure. <laughs> Can I just Buy orthogonal caster. Hold on. Maybe I can just... Okay, there we go. Now it's just a minute. Uh... Great flavored steroids sounds awesome, good. Bro. Dude, yes! I'm always unsure of, on steroids. It's so hard to determine if they're good or not. Pros, they make you buff. Cons, it doesn't seem like something a good boy would do. But it's grape flavor, so that's two pros over one con. <laughs> it has to be a healthy good thing, right? It's probably not healthy, but you're not a doctor, and the doctor you stole the steroids from was a doctor. You gain two charm and one fun. Let's go. I think I got it, man. Like, look at my stats. I'm bold, I'm fun, I'm charming. I got a lot of things going for me. Barry is drinking customary lunchtime scotch because you can drink whatever you hell you want at this school, but Scott's not making it easy for her. Hey, Bear, what you drinking? What? Scotch, why? Because it smells like delicious forest fire, and I'm curious, what's it called? Scotch. Yes. No, that's what it's called. What? Scotch. Yes? No. I'm saying... I'm not saying your name, I'm saying the name of the drink. I'm drinking, it's scotch. It's mine? No, it's mine. Why is it called Scots? It's what it's called. Oh, it's like an energy drink for Scots. It's like an energy drink for Scottish people. I'm a Scottish person. I'm as Scottish as a person to be. I'm the most Scott. No, God. What will it take for you to drop this issue? It's not, it's not gonna drop it unless you do something. You cut in and say, You're right, Scott. That drink is your birthright. Chug, 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 chug. You don't have to tell me five times. Bottoms up. No, what are you doing? Stop. Okay, I just drank the whole bottle anyway. Utter twit. That scotch was brewed by King Tutankhamen himself. I have no... I had to have an adventuring archaeologist betrayed and murdered for that bottle. What? Sorry? Did you say that again? I was blackout drunk from all your scots I drank. You're impossible. I'm impossible. Hooray! Drag Scott away to escape Brera's wrath. He spends the afternoon doing all your math homework for you. Turns out Scott's way smarter when he's blocked out. There's not a single thought in that head, man. The guy's dumb as shit. On the very day, way there, you run into Mam Mimi. The Oni girl. She offers you some weird Japanese energy drink. You take a sip. It tastes crazy as hell. You need to check the contents of this shit. Grana seed extract, benzoic acid, 50 milligrams of caffeine, and 100 milligrams of boldness. That wasn't bad at all. You gain two boldness thanks to Ma Mimi's and proceed to the bathroom. Later you hear some unmistakable growling that can only mean one thing. Intergalactic lions have broken through the space to devour one of the smaller, weaker students. No wait, that's just a wolf pack. I guess it could have meant two things. For the last time, is this a bromance or a bro treason, broski? You're my teammates and my family. I'm not trying to be a bad Scott, but it's the third month in a row you miss our full moon bro down. We got together and practiced wolf pyramid and helps each other inject sheep steroids. We played flip a cup and the lamb's blood spiked with natty ice. Sounds really nice, but I already had plans and I didn't want to let people down. Bruh, you're a wolf! You gotta go with the wolf pack. You gonna go with those other monsters? Oh damn, you're those other monsters. You better do something. Uh, 
Uh... Yeah, good face. New game, extreme long distance fetch. Bro, really? You think a little game of fetch is really gonna work on us? Because it will, I love fetch! Scott, not now, bro. Play it cool, play it cool. You hold up the headless kitten squeaky toy you always keep on hand, just in case. Immediately, you're tackled by five wolves. Turns out five wolves is something that you're no match for, strength-wise. Wolf packs scramble over each other, feet, paws, hands, tails, all colliding against each other and against you. Give it here, give it here, give it here! <laughs> I got it. Way to go, bro. But you're not gonna keep it. Wolfpack chases Scott. They seem to be having an amazing time. Why did you think encouraging a bunch of dog jocks to play fetch was going to make you seem like a good alternative? You lose two charm and one creativity. Okay, fine, whatever. Let's go. I'm going to the bathroom again. You don't stop there. You want the world to know how reckless you are for the rest of your turn. You eat graffiti, and then you get the two... Okay, cool. We've already seen that one. That day, uh, you didn't expect to find was a fucking wild griffin in the water cooler. WC? Water closet. That's it. The creature is wreaking... Wrecking everything with its griffinly matter. You can only assume that this thing's natural habitat is in a high school bathroom. You realize that you're not alone here. Scott and Damien are unsuccessfully trying to contain that situation. We're batching, we're ghosting, that's all we're doing, man. I'm starting to think that this maybe wasn't a good idea at all. Damn, this is crazy. How is this happening again? Our plan was perfect this time. Next time we should try and with the brie cheese instead of the gouda. I think that drove the griffin crazy. Let me make a note of that, Bree Damien. Is it brie cheese or brie cheese? Not now. I need to think of something about the griffin. We need to do something about the griffin or we're gonna get fucking expelled. Hey, you, come help us. We're gonna calm this thing down. There comes a time in everyone's life where they need to help deal with the wild griffin. That time is for you is now. Radical hip hop battle or turn it into a plate of spaghetti. The spell seems oddly specific. I don't know if I've got the spell for that. I don't know, let's give it a go. Ignoring all the noise from the griffin, you start reciting arcane words in long dead language. It might be a long shot, but you at least need to give it a try. A magnificent and mysterious light shines from your hands. You're an explosion, the bathroom fills with purple smoke. Fuck, it actually worked. The griffin is no more. Instead, in front of you, you have a plate of spaghetti. Good for you, I guess. What the fuck? You just turn that griffin into a plate of spaghetti? That's radical, dude. You have all you have to teach me that. I'm gonna turn all my enemies into all kinds of pasta. You saved your asses, thanks. And look, Damien, it happened all according to our plan. Look. Chot Scott shows some childish scribbles in his notebook, detailing the possible outcomes of their plan. And one of them involves turning the griffin into spaghetti. That's not even the weirdest one. I guess we're geniuses after all, right? We gotta admit that our friend has been a pretty key piece in this whole operation. Welcome back, dude. Hooray! Then all three of you s celebrate by eating the polymorph plate of pasta. It turned out to be great experience for everyone. Oh yeah, except for the griffin. Not so great experience for the griffin at all. You gain two boldness and one smarts. Nice. We're just gonna hang out with Scott whenever we can. We don't have any money. Found Polly and Scott huddled at your chosen table. These two are together can only mean one thing. I hereby call this meeting of the Prank Masters to order. Prank Masters howl, present and accounted for. Chairman Geist, all dressed up and ready to prank. Yeah, the bathroom seems to be giving boldness. That does seem to be correct. And hopefully I need boldness for this. Hey, come, how come you get to be the chairman? Well, which one of us can throw chairs around the room with our ghost powers? I don't have ghost powers. Oh, you, I get it. Yeah, chair, man, but... No time to argue, Scott. We gotta come up with a baller food prank before the end of lunch. But yeah, okay, what if we all ate our food like good boy? Is that a prank? No, Scott. For the last time, that's not a prank, and I don't eat. But I'm trouble coming up with another idea. Anybody else? You've been waiting your whole life for an opportunity like this. You propose the ultimate food prank. 
Huh. I feel like this is the good boy option. Yeah, let's be a good boy. Eat other people's food? You can do that? Well, I can. But I can. Even if everybody... Oh, wait, what? Even if it's in someone else's plate or in someone else's tummy? Exactly half of that was right. Which half? Oh, no time to figure out. We gotta prank now if we're gonna get the pranks going. Wait. How much do we need to pay for Rev to cosplay as Scott? I mean, I just have to shave the mustache portion of my face and let the, uh, the higher up be going. Wait, what about me? Food r falls right through me. You and Scott are already blazing a trail through the cafeteria, gobbling up everything in sight. Scott accidentally eats a few people along with their food, but he politely burps them out when they complain. By the time school security kicks you two out, you're both totally stuffed with food and affection for each other. Nice. This game has everything. Vor. Uh, I don't know where to have fun. But I'm gonna do a bathroom only run. Casually practicing some magic spells when Damien and Scott come running up to you. Dude, bruh. You said a fucking sick idea. We need your help to make it work. Shh, Scott, be cool. Oh, yeah, I'm being cool. I can be cool. All right, picture this family style pasta restaurant in the fifth circle of hell. We'll call it Pasta Paradise. Scott and Damien's Pasta Paradise. Scott got the blueprints all drawn up and I got a real estate rights. All I need is someone who can turn griffins into pasta. Oh, wait, Damien. Yeah? We're we gonna get enough Griffins to stock a whole restaurant with pasta. Ah, oh, fuck. Okay, listen. I wanted to cut you in on this business venture, but only if you can find us enough Griffins to stock our kitchens. Nice move, Damien. That's why you got the brains. Damn right. So how's about it? You can actually make pasta without turning Griffins into it. Yeah. What? What? You fucking kidding me? Are you telling jokes right now? Are you serious? Be cool, Scott. Be cool. I can't be cool. This news is too exciting. Scott, play dead. Scott drops on the floor and stops talking. Okay, you. All right. So you're telling me there's a way to make pasta without using Griffins. It's a real game changer. This put a pet, put us ahead of the competition. Everyone's fucking stupid. I gotta get started on our business plan. I won't forget this. Damien runs off, leaving Scott still lying on the floor. Is he still breathing? You should probably check. In any case, two creativity, one smart. Let's go. Oh, you're in the bathroom. I have to go somewhere else. Shit. Uh, where is fun? Outdoors? I haven't been to class once. Everything's fine until one, the small, magical Latino cat asks you what you think you're doing. Damn, you didn't remember you suck at dancing. You decide you go all in to pretend it's a new dance move. Apparently it's called the Groovy Musaka. And Juan looks at you and he asks you to teach it to him. The Groovy Musaka. In no time, half the party is following your steps, enjoying the Groovy Musaka all together. It's a party you're to remember. You gain two fun and cool as... A uh, story to tell your grandkids someday. You mind your own business when jo Scott jogs up and gives you a friendly punch in the sh Scott is following me. Hey, yeah, bro. I was just looking for you. The game, big game stand. I need a friendly face to pet me up. I know, I know. We got cheerleaders for that, but whatever. But between you and me, bro, I don't think our cheerleaders are hype enough. I'm not even trying. They're supposed to be giving me a... Uh, they're supposed to give 110%. They're giving only like 107, 108% tops. 
why I need you to give 115% at the game tonight so I can give 120 or even 135. Thanks, bro. I know I could count on you. See you tonight. Scott bumps fists and sprints off waiting for you to agree to the cheerleading scheme. Guess this is what it's like to be Scott's bro. It's what you need to do when you get uh, to get him amped up at the game. Uh, hmm. I rolled the dice, I got one. Think of your stats. Oh, it's like strong. I'm not very creative. This is the bold option. At night. Oh wait, I should probably pick one that involves, okay, whatever. That night, you show up to the big game ready to bring the motherfucking ruckus. A critical moment when Scott's got the ball, you sneak up behind the cheerleading squad and hoist him skyward using a combination of telekinesis and buffness. His terrified screams reach pitch only dogs can hear, which is actually super motivating for Scott, and he scores. After the game, Scott catches you up by the bleachers. Bro, that was fucking sick. You threw those cheerleaders so high, they never throw each other up that high. After that, they were so scared of you throwing them, they, they actually gave like 160%. This is literally like a thousand times more percent. You killed it, bruh. Bring it in. Scott gives you the traditional pros game slap on the ass. You have red handprint there for days. Nice. Nice! You gain two fun and one boldness. You approach your chosen table when you see Liam is framing his art artfully arranged jelly dessert for a translucent food pick when <laughs> food pick ride those food picks of victory what what does that even mean when I say food you say pick food no food stop two four pick eight food who we appreciate food picks food picks go Cease this incessant chanting this instant. Ugh. What? I'm trying to help you take your boost food pick. I'm trying to take this food pick for like 20 minutes now. You gotta stamp this pick so I can eat. you can eat your tasty food. I don't eat, Scott. I only ordered this food so I can take pictures of it, and you're not helping. Oh, I know, I know. My cheerleading isn't good enough. We need a cheer partner to take me to the next level. I need... No, what you need is a swift kick in the... But it's too late. Scott had already chosen you as your cheer partner. Now it's up to you to choose what the two of you will do. Quite art mime or pick him up and throw him around? Uh, yeet. I get it, amp him up. Like, where the sky is, let's do it. What? No, that's horrible. Crazen, thank you for the three months of support. Up you go, little buddy. Reach for the stars. Okay, I'm actually getting pretty artistic angles on my food from up here. But this is still not okay. Oh, Liam. Always being sarcastic. He loves it. Wait. You choose now to finally start understanding what sarcasm is? I'm not being sarcastic. You can't fool me, Liam. I know everything you said means the opposite of what you th I think it means. Liam eventually gets Scott up and to get him down to saying that he loves being thrown in the air. Scott somehow believes that he did the right thing and gives you the most intimate fist bump. Ooh, intimate fist bumps. Oh. Let's go. Bathroom time. Don't worry. Don't be okay, right? You can start doing something productive, or you can put your blanket put on your blanket and get up to some good old ghost shenanigans. Looking for someone. But you run into that person that might finally see you through your ghostly deception. Apart from boring old Liam. Wait. What's this? Another ghost? I can't believe this! Finally, someone else notices. It's clearly just Pingal wearing a... I can't believe it's because it's so cool to be true! Come on, it's not cool or nor true. Shut up, Leon. I can hear our cool new ghost friend all over your jealousy. So tell me, how did you die? We have to share so much ghost gossip. Or gossip, as I like to call it. Six weeks of batching, time for prom. 
We won't need to shit for a fucking month. Months, even. God, like, six months of batching is probably worth way more time. Another good question. Time to improve a lie with a better lie. I need to tell how I died on the third date. Boo. Ghost wink. Or, I was offered as a sacrifice to the god of party! Death by batching. I got a two. So we'll go with two. What? It's probably just a big lie. I bet you're some idiot who decided to wear a blanket and imitate a ghost. Finally. And then you died in a stupid way like if asphyxiating under that blanket. And you were cursed for dying such a stupid way with an ironic punishment of having to wander around the world as a very realistic ghost look. You're literally a ghost! You would know what ghosts are supposed to look like. I know what a sexy ghost looks like right now. Disappointed. Bye! And she phases out. I swear, you're making my life miserable. You have a blanket. You blanket wearing moron. Your life is miserable right now. You just lost two fun and one charm. Uh, yeah, Scott. Howdy. Yes, cut the cute. Let's go. I can't say no to a ghost with awesome ghostly muscles. We can do push ups and go through walls with our ghost powers. Seems to be ignoring the fact that he's totally not a ghost, but who cares? Neither are you. And he's so adorable. Ghost lovers unite. Love. Prom night is superb. In the end, you both had a great ghostly time. Even if neither of you is a ghost. Nice! Nice! Ghost time. Most likely to devour her own children to survive, and Scott's quote is, what's a quote? Nice, dude. Scott and Liam co-wrote weird, cheesy fanfic of two lights that became so unexpectedly popular to the point that it turned into a well-known novel of its own. Half the characters were shirtless, for all the right reasons. Vera kept being for fierce, strong, and stunning. Some haters once said adult life would put that mean bitch in her place. But you know what? Vera ended up making adult life her own bitch. Damien found peace in the world the most unexpected way. He kept punching everything till one day he punched his own anger to death. He's written a book about it. Those six weeks of batching, Monster Prom seemed larger than life, and then it was gone just like that. The battle for Monster Prom might have ended then, but there were plenty of battles left that war called youth. And once again, we're young and our friend and ready to start. Like, that's straight up a uh, guy from He Man, right? And that's Slender Man. Jesus, this music is so bad. It's got like a, like, bit in that bit DJ Cutman I had a chance to go see him live I think I did I don't remember is that TMG one year High school butt rock. Jesus, the levels suck on this song. That's the main issue I've got with it. Thanks for playing. Nice. Ero looks like you unlocked an erotic fanfic about dragons. It's about to get weird. Dragon heat. One night. No limits.
I mean, it was the, the ghosts. Okay, so these are all the ones at the end there. Start kicker. What will Buttman do? Okay. Oh, it's like all the characters, and you can check out their different outfits. Sure. Okay. Forbes. Oh, like they, they've shipped them with their own care. Oh, who the fuck is this? Gas mask, dude. Nice. A lot of art. Holy shit. Monster sodas. Well, I think that's where I'm going to call it on this one. If you guys liked this, let me know. I'll do more of it. What's your monster sona? Honestly, just be the monster you want to see in the world. Fucking cause problems on purpose. <laughs> uh, hey, we got two arts to look at here. One is from uh, Zevi, and we saw it yesterday on Mike's stream, but I'm going to show it here as well. Um... Like, you know, there, there's no difference between, you know, a monster Sona and me. I, I'm just me, man. Uh, a fucking horrible person. <laughs> uh, we played a Kiwi game yesterday, me and Mike. Uh, you can check it out on his uh, YouTube channel or probably on his Twitch. Uh, I don't know when that's going on to YouTube, but maybe by the time this comes out. I don't know, I don't know what his upload schedule is. Anyway, there's that. Uh, this one's me. Uh, I, I chose to have rose glasses and a little top hat. And Mike decided to be, uh, gay and a gamer. A gamer. Uh, it's by Zevi. Thank you, Zevi. It was a great game. Uh, it's called Kiwi. Uh, I forget. It's not spelled the way you think it is. It's spelled K-E-Y-W-E. It's, it's about, it's sort of like, um... I want to say cooked, served, delicious, but that's not right. Um, but anyway, you do a little post task. It's cute. It's a cute game. We'll probably play it again at some point. Uh, and then we got this one from uh, tonight, Overcooked. That's the game I'm thinking of. Thank you. And then we got this one from Anna LRK. And it's just me saying, what the hell is this game? Honestly, yeah, what the fuck was that? I mean, it's a dating sim, but it's competitive dating. That's the bit that, like, I'm like, What? Little zombie fella. Uh, okay. Anyone's got any recommendations for more uh, Halloween games? They don't have to be spooky. They can be like this, where it's just monster themed or whatever. Uh, let me know. I'll I'll try them. Uh, in multiplayer, you can sabotage people. Okay. <laughs> well, like, what if you're going? It's only I I guess if you're going for the same person, you sabotage. I don't know. But you could be like cooperative if you like, you know, we're going for different people. Sexy Brutal. That's that game that has an awful name, but is actually really good, right? Like the name killed the series. It's like kind of got a um, uh, Majora's Mask time resetting thing. Puzzle game. Looked all right. I don't know. I'm already coming out and recommending it to people on, uh, I don't have PS4. Um, play Pony Island. It's costume quest. I'll put Pony Island on the list. I think I've got it, man. I think I own it. Pony Island is fun. All right. Well, 
that'll be it for me for now. I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, let me know. If you didn't, let me know. I'm going to run an ad and bounce on out of here. Uh, let's see if anyone's live. I'm going to start running that ad now, and I'm going to check and see if anyone's live. Soma I've already done. I don't really think I need to do Soma again. Uh, who is live? Anyone? I would assume someone is. Looks like Hootie's live. Hootie's live. We're raiding Hootie. Holy shit, we're raiding Hootie. Hootie's never live. All right. I'm going to go and go. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys later. Burr!